OPEC and non-OPEC Joint Technical Committee will meet on February 4 and 5 in Vienna to assess the impact of China's new coronavirus on oil demand. The technical panel is likely to make a recommendation on whether to extend current oil supply curbs beyond March or to implement deeper output cuts. OPEC officials are considering their options on how best to deal with the potential impact from the spread of the coronavirus, which has killed more than 300 people and caused oil prices to slide. An airline South African Airways over the weekend announced another batch of cancelled and consolidated flights spanning through the month of February. This is the airline's aggressive approach to save costs. 48 round trips from three domestic routes, one international and five regional routes will be affected. The embattled airline is fighting for its survival after it entered a form of bankruptcy protection in December and cancelled some flights because of cash shortages. Business rescue practitioners will now have to present a plan that will also put an end to the cancellation of flights. Our correspondent, Kat Lehodi, has more on the story. 3.5 billion rand of emergency funding from the Development Bank of Southern Africa brings to an end weeks of uncertainty around the future of the national carrier following reports that 2 billion rand earmarked for SAA had still not been received from government. The South African government intends to introduce a radical restructuring process at the airline aimed at ensuring its financial and operational sustainability. According to travel agent Buki Enoha, the airline is in need of reforms that will see the business rescue process yield anticipated results. This is possible, it's quite doable, depending on how well government is able to take the, the structural reform that these business practitioners are going to, to roll out. Depending, in six months' time, Kathleen we could be sitting and saying, thank God that this airline ended up being privatized. We could be saying, thank God for the joint venture, or we are saying, oh, what a great government we have. They've been able to turn around, and turn around SAE, still as SOE. So depending on the scenario, and uh, you know, it's one thing for you to be brought in as advisor, it's another thing for your advice to be taken. Aviation expert Dr. Joachim Fermorten says SAA still finds itself in trouble as this restructuring process will still require more funding. It will be expensive whichever way one looks at it. In order to bring down the cost, uh, the business rescue practitioners would have to look at the restructuring, the structure of SAA itself. Uh, maybe just to retain the international services this is an example of maybe five or six routes, sell Manga and sell is a technical and some other to be able to pay uh, some of the creditors' liabilities, uh, because otherwise the cost will be very substantial. The South African Airways is a key strategic asset which needs to be positioned properly to provide reliable connectivity to markets within South Africa, the African continent, as well as servicing selected international routes. While the business rescue practitioners work on a plan that will need to be approved by the creditors, the issue of wage disputes, planned retrenchments and leadership concerns at the embattled airline still remain. Labour is meeting this Friday with the business rescue practitioners to get an update on the process so far and to come up with their response to the latest developments at SAA. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Katle Holokhodi, Channels Television News. And lines to the pump are sneaking across Liberia's capital, Monrovia, after the government announced this week that the country was unexpectedly down to its last few days' worth of gasoline because authorities had overestimated how much was in storage. A shipment is expected to bring supplies soon from overseas, but critics are bristling at what they see as another sign of President George Way's chaotic leadership. An error in the accounting of fuel supplies in the state-run tanks left Liberia with 1.1 million gallons of fuel this week, a fraction of the 4.4 million that the government thought it had. 
The mistake has echoes of a saga involving the suspected loss and then recovery of $100 million in cash destined for the central bank in 2017 and 2018 and has critics bristling at what they see as chaotic leadership under President George Ware. It has also had an impact on Liberia's economy, already suffering from high inflation and a depreciating Liberia dollar. I'm angry, I'm bad factor, I'm, I, I, I mean, I'm useless to my family. I cannot afford where I work is this place. My working area is in my taxi. If I can't get gasoline to move here and there and get one or two cents, I will not feed my family. I will not be able to do anything for them. Yeah, the shortage of gas is embarrassed our business. Like this morning, we came here since 5 o'clock, and we are still here up to now. Yeah, and we start traffic by 6 or uh, 6.30. But from 5 this morning to 8 now, as you can see, it is really embarrassing us. The crisis, which began a few days ago, was caused by a discrepancy between importers' inventory figures and the actual quantity of fuel in shortage tanks managed by the Liberia Petroleum Refining Company. Our government, President George Manning, we are that I cast my vote for. Today, it should be the end that he can give us gas to get our children to school. I can't be riding bicycle. I, I trusted him with my vote. That's why I elected him. Emergency shipments are expected from overseas in the coming days. And the United Arab Emirates has made $2 billion available in Mauritania's investment development projects and soft loans, a sum that equals roughly a third of its gross domestic product. The announcement came after President Mohammed al Kwazini met Abu Dhabi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, marking his first state visit to an Arabic country since assuming office in June 2019. While the arid West African nation, with a population of about 4 million people, is among the region's poorest, is expected to become a natural gas exporter following large offshore discoveries by major oil and gas explorers last year. And ExxonMobil Corporation and Total have asked Mozambique to send more troops to guard their operations in the far north after a surge of attacks by Islamist militants. Mozambique's northern province of Cabo Delgado is home to one of the world's biggest gas finds in the past decade, and both oil majors are working on massive LNG projects that could transform the economy. The area is also the center of an Islamist insurgency that has killed hundreds since 2017. Fighters have destroyed villages clashed with soldiers and often beheaded captives. And finally, as global investors shift away from heavy industry in favor of cleaner sectors, mining companies are losing billions in financing, raising the cost of capital and jeopardizing projects. Making the mining industry more sustainable by running mines on renewable energy, for example, will be a key focus at the annual Investing in African Mining in Daba conference in Cape Town this week, as companies hunt for new sources of capital, including private equity, debt, offtake finance, and royalty finance. Environmental, social and governance concerns have driven money into specialized ESG funds, which often exclude mining stocks among other dirty assets. In November, the African Development Bank decided against funding a Cayenne coal project that has halted by a local environmental tribunal in June. The continent's biggest coal producer, South Africa, is also seeing funding dry up. South Africa's Ned Bank has stopped funding coal-related projects, while first round cut greenfield thermal coal projects to less than 0.5% of its lending. And that's it on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago.